Hey Grapevines, up, welcome y'all? back to another Q and A. Y'all love these. Yeah, y'all do. So uh, we gonna go ahead and get started with some more questions. Brand new, give this video a thumbs up if you're excited and you like these types of videos. Also comment down below some more questions for a future Q and A. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already and turn that bell on for our notifications. First question. Right into it like that. Yep. What, what, what you say? What you say? You wanted to say something? What? Yo, let us know if y'all want to see us do it on the mukbang. Y'all showed that video so much love. Mm-hmm. Thank y'all for tuning in to that seafood boil mukbang where we just talked so and vibed out. We uh, we love crawfish and we love eating and uh, we love answering y'all questions. So if y'all want to see another one, holla at us, leave a comment, flood the comment, and thumb up all the, the nice comments that you see. Let's go! Let's go! <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. Jerani, Jerani underscore Romero asks, how long will you homeschool? For as long as I possibly life. can. Um, I, life. I would like to homeschool for as long as I can. I don't have any intentions on putting them in a school um, anytime soon. So definitely through elementary school for sure. Um... Carla Oliveira7474 asks, where do you get your purses? I get them from everywhere. The fancy stores. Um, so, no, and even like I, ha- I go to Target. Neiman Marcus. I go to Neiman Marcus. Um, I Macy's. go to Macy's. Um, Louis Vuitton. I, Gucci I just, store. Yeah, like I just Online. go everywhere. Online sometimes. Yeah. But usually I like to be like in the store so I can inspect the bag. She loves customer service. She want to be served. She loves the presentation. She loves to touch it and feel it. So for the most part, she gets it from the store. Yeah. Um, Mrs. Dot Santuario 91 asks, what are your self-care tips? Hmm? What's that mean? What are your self-care tips? Like, What's that mean? I don't know. know. How do self-care? How do you take, take care, care of yourself? yourself? I take care of myself? Uh, I never thought of it like that. How do I take care of myself? What are your self-care tips? I don't know what that means. That's a guy question or a girl thing? That sounds like a girl question. It's like, like girl and guy like thing. Like skincare. Like what's your skincare regimen? No, she regimen? said self-care. Self-care I know, that's what I'm is, um, self-care? I get a Eating? lot of sleep. Sleep? Oh. I eat when Work? I want to eat. Um, I don't, for the most part, I do eat clean. Lately, it's been kind of like, it used to be like a 80-20, but now it's more like 70-30 because I am now doing mukbangs and that's a lot of fun. But sometimes I will have like, instead of two cheat meals a week, I mean one, I'll have two. Mm. So, um, yeah. Are you take care of yourself? Mm-hmm. And I, <coughs> um, what else? I don't know. I rest and I'm in the word with my husband. I and like I don't stress. Juices. Oh yeah, green juice. I like green juices. I love fruits. I love nuts. I eat a lot of nuts. Mm-hmm. I drink water. That's the only drink I drink. Other than I add apple juice, a little yeah. bit of apple juice to the green juices. But no, I, I chill. I, I rest my nerves. I watch sports. Uh, that's how I take care of myself. You know, I definitely uh, take in the word. And I think, yeah, it's pretty simple. I feel like the less you have you know, in your routine, the better, mm-hmm. you know, keep your life simple. I'm yeah. complicated doing too much. Yeah. I, I work out, um, four to five days a week and I watch our workout. Yeah. <laughs> Bree Seppi asked, Bree Seppi. B-R-I-I-S-T-P-P. Right. I'm thinking about getting LASIK eye surgery. And from what I remember years ago, you had it. How was the experience? Is your eyesight still perfect? And would you recommend it? Okay, so yes, I had it a few years no, ago, PRK. and I had, yeah, PRK, which is an LASIK. older version of really? LASIK. Yeah, it's like an old school version. It's They've had that before LASIK even came out, um, and that's because I didn't qualify for LASIK because my corneas were too thin, and so um, my procedure had a longer healing time, and it does, like, hurt a little bit, like, after the healing time hurts. Like, LASIK, I hear it like doesn't hurt at all whereas my recovery time it hurt like the first day and a half um but other than that uh the experience has been amazing i feel like it's worth every single penny i totally recommend it thank you honey so much you actually told me like 
you got LASIK for me, or the PRK procedure. He, like, surprised me because I talked about my eyesight. He was like, why don't you just get it done? I'm like, yeah, what? Yeah, I remember D used to always wear glasses. Yeah, I used to wear glasses, and I didn't like how glasses looked on me. Then I tried contacts for, like, a month, and I was not having it. Like, it hurt, like itched my eyes. I just had mm -hmm. so much trouble with contacts. And he was just like, hey, babe, like, do the eye surgery. Like, I'll, I'll pay for it. That seemed like so long ago. Yeah. I forget that you even had that. Yeah, but it was worth every penny, and I still see perfectly fine. I will say that certain times, like, it, this just started happening recently, where, and this is, like, years later. How long has it been? Like, four years, maybe? I don't know. Mm -hmm. When we watch TV at night, like, the words from the guide, like, the information, when you hit, like, information to read, some words look a little, like, glowy. So I like squint a little bit, but I mean, my vision's still pretty good. Like I think I would still pass 2020 vision if I was to take it now. So totally recommend it. Long story short, yes, I totally recommend it. Worth every penny. And it wasn't even that expensive. It was like what, like two grand? I don't remember. All I do is sweat. Oh my gosh. <laughs> but yeah, it wasn't it wasn't that bad at all for how, what it does did to my life. Like love underscore always true d is usher still your favorite singer jerry who is your favorite artist yes usher is still my favorite like r&b singer um i think he's amazing despite you know whatever stuff going on in his personal life i like say i wanted to sleep with a man uh but he's definitely a great artist and i feel like he's like a legend in the r&b world music world so, yeah. What about you? Who's yeah. your favorite artist? I don't think I have a favorite. No? No. I know that's probably, like, boring. <laughs> but I can't think of... Oh, I do have a favorite artist. Drew Brees. Oh, my gosh. Who that? What is... He does it... Okay. He do music. He's singing a shower on show. Mm, okay. Drew Brees. Aye, aye, aye. Chinita.2.0 asks... What jobs do you guys think you would have if you didn't vlog and make content for YouTube? I'm glad you asked that question because I just told D I got an idea. I want to do a series where your boy going to go apply for jobs. <laughs> well, y'all let me know if y'all want me to put it on Levine Life or you want me to throw that thing up on another channel. Or would you be interested in seeing your boy go through the whole process, application to the, the phone interview, to the sit down interview. Your boy going to try to do it all. Okay. You know, you got to do what you got to do. <laughs> but what But what job would you have if you didn't vlog and make content for YouTube? Uh, I did. The last jobs I had was uh, banking. Banking? So you yeah. would probably do go back into banking? I guess so. I wouldn't even be out of it, you know, because I stopped doing banking for mm -hmm. YouTube years okay. ago. So. Um, me? I would oh, yeah, probably do, be, yeah. I don't know, I'd be manager somewhere. Yeah, she'd I've be always boss worked, of I, Well, I've worked management before, so I have the experience. That's I have all you've done. My degree, yeah, that's all I've done. Um, so either in retail management or I would do something in corporate management maybe. Um, or I could go back to um, my the engineering company I worked for. Um, I love that job and like the all the your employees I, yeah, and your workers. Like, She'll yeah. be somebody's boss. No, like they love me there. Um, so I know I still keep in touch with the employees and, and even owners that work that work there. One of the owners, and he's like, yeah, you're always welcome back. Um, so I definitely have like options if I ever wanted to go back to like the nine to five life, um, but I don't plan on it honestly. I actually am working outside of YouTube right now, like with like my fitness stuff. Well, I mean, I guess it's kind of YouTube still, but I would love to also do something possibly in the fitness realm where, I don't know. So fitness or business management. Yeah. I'm like rambling. Andy MLG underscore asked the best thing about being married. Man. Um, a lot of stuff. Shoot, baduti whenever, wherever. Well, well people whenever. get baduti <laughs> whenever, but I feel like, but I just feel like everything that is it is like, better though in a relationship married. is just better. Yeah, it just is. Like I don't know, 
the money's better, mm -hmm. the the maturity of conversation is better, the security is better, the the family dynamic is better. You know, it, it's it's a lot of things that that increase. Okay, yeah, you're right. Stephanie Aubrey asks, I've been with my husband for almost nine years now. How do you find new things to do together that both of you will enjoy, or do you guys take turns? I feel like we got this question, like a similar one in our a mukbang we did on Queen D. It was the answer. Um, it was the spice up question. Yeah, do like, spice up? I don't know. We don't really try to come up with things, or, I mean, we have date nights, like, once um, every month or so, month and a half. Um, but... We don't really, I feel like it's the same answer. We said we didn't really like try or plan stuff. Like we're just. I'm more of an adventurous say? one. So it's yeah. like, we really just take turns. Like you said in your question. Uh, but take turns doing what? Take turns picking what you want to do, what your interest is. Oh, so, okay. You know, D, she would want to go shopping. So we'll go shopping and then that's fine. When like, have I, when's the last time I wanted to go shopping though? I haven't picked that. No, I know. I'm using an example. Oh, it's usually as, like as dinner. Of, <laughs> usually yeah, no, we always go out to eat. Yeah, that's another yeah. thing. That's something that Dee enjoys. I'm not big of a, I'm not a big eater. I'm not yeah. a foodie. So uh, a lot of times we'll be going, we'll go out to eat. And uh, that's something that she enjoys and she likes the experience and being served. And I don't care. I can eat, you know, noodles at home. But um, it's, I feel like it's, it's not even about all that. I think it's just about spending time with the other person. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't focus on, oh, if you're going into it trying to feel like an activity is going to spice up to make your relationship more exciting and better, that's fleeting. Like I feel like it's always going to be, oh, that's not fun no more. That's not entertaining for us. That's not making me laugh and happy and love this person. The outside things shouldn't be the reason why you love the person more or get excitement mm -hmm. it's just fun to do but i wouldn't put all my my faith and trust in that as like oh we need to come up with skydiving because we done ran out of ideas of what we need to do i feel like you're gonna get exhausted yeah trying to figure out what you want to do to top the last thing you just did like for example like uh i feel like the proposal was the most romantic and the biggest thing i've ever done in my relationship and then after that i didn't put pressure on myself to be like i need to top that I did. You you gotta change what you think about uh, what defies your relationship, or defies your happiness, or defies you know your significance in a relationship. Every day, I just focus on the now and just worrying about how can I you know be loving towards her, how can I spend time with her, how can I have a healthy dialogue with her, and just doing my part. And then everything else is going to just happen on its own. You know, we don't really plan a lot of stuff, activities and things to do, you know, with each other. We just. We have an like hour out of the day where we can go do something. We either chill together, we'll watch something together, we'll go rip and run in the streets, get stuff done, go see a movie. Simple. I feel like don't overcomplicate your relationship. Like just keep it simple. Just spend quality time and you're gonna have a blast. Because a lot of times we'll have the best time when we just sit down and people watch. It doesn't have to be something over the top, like, oh, I need to go on a helicopter ride. You don't have to do all that. You could do it if you want, but at the same time, you got to be able to dumb it down and do the simple stuff, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great answer, babe. Um, one Danielle underscore W asks, how many hours a day do you spend recording and editing? And to another question I seen, are you guys the same off camera? And lastly, do you think you guys would be different towards each other if YouTube wasn't such a big part of your life? So first question, how many hours a day do you spend recording and editing? I mean, we work around the clock, I feel like, every day. It's hard to answer. I think we never, yeah. like, nailed down the time. Yeah. I would estimate... I can only speak for my editing. So, I'm in the office majority of the day. Um, majority of the day. Uh, I would say, depend on the video. I feel like the longest yeah. videos are definitely D. Levine videos. Uh, the handbags and the reviews. Those take, you know, the long... It takes a long time um, to edit. And what other one is... It takes me a long time. Hmm. Huh. I feel like that's always the one that stands out the most. Though. I really? have to do the most. Yeah, because I got the words and the, the, the B roll and the well, live what about shots. Your skits and stuff. Or your oh, words? I just, yeah, yeah, just getting back to that one, the one I did about Towards the Rust. Mm -hmm. That one took a long time. I feel like the, the skits or the rants take about as much time or more mm -hmm. than um, the D. Levine 
shots. I feel like everything else is easy. Yeah. I would say on average, we work every day, like maybe <laughs> six days a week. Um, and we work like 12 hours a day. Was oh, that no, counting? Like, total, like filming, editing? That, that counts filming, editing. Yeah, tags, like work. Any of the work. Yeah. yeah. It's like 12 to 14 hours a day. I feel like I, my day stops around uh, 5, 6. That's usually when my work mm-hmm. day stops. I'm not going to say when it starts, but it starts not anywhere close to the evening time. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I, would, I would say a good, let's see. Yeah, it's like 12 hours, 13, 14 hours. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. seem like that. But it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't seem like that. Like, we're so blessed. Because we love, you know. It, yeah. And I love, and I, um, I, I love when people say, oh, you need to get a real job because this is not a real job. And I, I like that. That's like a compliment to me. Mm-hmm. It doesn't feel like a real job. And I feel like that's a dream uh, and a blessing. Yeah. And the question, 13 are you. 13 hours? I need a vacay. Are you guys are you guys <laughs> the same off camera? I would like to think so. Yeah. I could tell y'all we the same, but it's up to you. What's your opinion? What do you think? You think we fake? You think we not like this off camera? We would think we're too like Let submissive and lovey dovey. Submissive? The Bible does say submit one to another. That's what it says. You're not supposed to the woman's not supposed to submit to the man, the man's you know, it's not supposed to be like that. The Bible says we're supposed to submit to one another. Mm-hmm. We're supposed to love on each other. So we live off these principles. So from what we're saying, that our core values and our principles are, if you think that once the camera go off, our principles and core values change, that just leave your comments down below. Tell me what you think. <laughs> Say what's your speculation or what you know. Tell me what you know what we do as soon as we start recording. But uh, yeah, I feel like I know our principles and our character are very strong. Like, I'm really yeah. adamant. Especially now. Like, you know, years ago, then yeah, I could say you guys could question, like, uh, us. Like, oh, y'all, very you know what? But because we, but we weren't acting lovey-dovey back then. Mm-hmm. We showed when we were arguing and, yeah. like, didn't get along. Yeah, so we were being real then, too. Um, but... Right now, like, we're just really happy. And so sometimes that can translate to... Not real. Not real on camera. I don't know. I don't see what y'all see. Because, yeah. you know, you only seen it from your eyes. I just know I'm living my life. I'm living the best life. And, um, yeah, I'm thankful. That's crazy. Cool. And lastly, do you guys think you would be different towards each other if YouTube wasn't such a big part of your life? I don't think so. I mean, I wasn't always, like, I don't know. I think y'all forget, um, or there's just a lot of newer people. Um, But I worked outside of the home while he did YouTube for several years, Mm -hmm. and we were fine then. And even if I had to do that um, now or later on, I think we'd be good. What should you mean? What should you say? Different? Would yeah, like, different? do you think we would be, you guys would be different towards each other if YouTube wasn't such a big part of your life? I would hope not. Yeah, I, like, I, I can't really answer a hypothetical. You know, I'm, I'm not a hypothetical guy. That's true. YouTube has always been a part of our life, so we technically don't know. Um, but I don't care to know, really. Yeah. But like, I know it's just a funny conversation, fun conversation. Yeah. Like, yeah, I'm going to be different because I'll be working on 9 to 5. She'll be working on 9 to 5. The kids be in daycare. And, you know, I'll be super stressed out. And we'll be snapping at each other. And it'll be, you know, a nice, normal, real-life existence, you know, mm-hmm. with real jobs and and real, uh, yeah. Cool. Last question. I'll probably do make this last question. And then if y'all want, like, another Q&A with other questions, let us know down below. And we'll keep providing them for you guys. Um, but this one is from one Danielle underscore W and Taylor underscore Imani 1996. It's like they, I guess they had like a conversation with each other, like a little thread, like replies. Um, and this is on IG, D. Levine. Yeah. Taylor initiates it. She says, do you guys have plans on talking to J3 and Jordan or any of your future kids in the future on what it means to be black in America? And I Danielle, knew that was coming. No, why, why did I get a sense that that was coming? If it was oh. a thread. Yeah, and one Danielle underscore W says, 
Being a mom to black children myself, I've learned a lot and learned even more being with a black man. There's much more to having mixed children, way more than doing their hair. And I've always wondered if Jerry ever voices this to D. If I voice yeah, if I voice to D that what the Um, like the Being black? Uh, being black in America, yeah. And then Taylor says, I agree. I wondered if they ever thought this way because Jerry and Jordan are lighter. However, that still doesn't negate the fact that they should be aware. If not now at their age, then definitely when they're older. I love Jerry and Dee, though. They're great parents. Thank you, Taylor. Thank um, you. So, yeah, that, the initial question. Do you plan on talking to J3 and Jordan on what it means to be black in America? Why are you pausing? <laughs> Is that a hard I'm question? Trying, I'm trying, trying to, to s- articulate yourself? Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah, because your boy could go off the handle. Oh, Off okay. the fly. And, you know, I'm trying to... Let me see. How can I say it? Don't be fake. <laughs> um, will I ever talk to him? Yeah. I'll talk to him about everything. Yeah? Yeah, what about you? That's it? Oh. Will, will I have to elaborate? Yeah, about like, what? do you guys have plans on talking to... J3 and Jordan, um, know, on what like it means yes to be no. black in America. Yeah, that's, that's like a yes or no. Oh, like, yes, do you, you do? Plan on, okay. Yeah, I'm talking about it. Okay. Whatever they want to talk about. I just I know with our kids, we're going to always be open and honest talking about whatever that they want to talk about. Uh, we're always here to educate them, to teach them about you know traps and situations that they can avoid or not avoid or... Uh, situations that they could uh, could be in we just won't always get them prepared Mm -hmm. for anything that uh, the devil uh, may bring toward them Mm -hmm. in Jesus name yeah I think definitely we'll have that conversation I do feel like right now they're a little young for that Um, but they didn't say now they just said do you feel like you will um, and they said about the hair care and all that they said, wait, I lost it. Yeah, do you have plans on talking to them? And they said now or later on. Like, are they too young for that? And I say, yeah, I do oh, think. Oh, are they actually if they're too young for that? Yeah, like, will they do, do we do it now or do we think they're oh, too young? Oh, I didn't hear that part. I just, later? I just thought you said, oh, will no. we ever talk about it? Yeah, we, we, I'm sure it's going to come up. Yeah. Because in society, it's always going to be somebody that's going to tell them or. Mm-hmm. But I know right now I'm not going to bring it up to them because they're angels. Okay. I don't want them to have too much worldly influence Mm -hmm. at this perfect time in their life. I just want to fill them with love and just enjoy this innocence that they have before the world and all these demon spirits start to influence them, having them feel like they're insignificant or that they're poor because they're either black or they're mixed or all the stuff I had to deal with growing up being in new orleans and being red and being white and black and french whatever even though i'm black Mm -hmm. but it depends on who you ask you know yeah it's it's too heavy of a topic for a kid for me to bring up to a kid to burden them down with no i want you to enjoy the cartoons i want you to enjoy playing with play-doh have a great childhood don't worry about this stuff you're gonna have your whole life where you're gonna click on tv you're gonna go out in society it's gonna be all this crazy stuff going on so, no, I'm not bringing it up to the kids at all. It's going to be brought to them, and I'm going to have to have a real conversation with them in private between me and my kids. That's just me as a father, because I'm, I'm definitely going to be very protective. I'm very protective over my kids mm-hmm. because I know what I went through. I know what my parents did for me and what they talked to me about. And I definitely will do the same in order to make sure that they have confidence within themselves, regardless of what color they are, they're going to be Christian. And they're going to be in, believing in Jesus and they're going to believe in God. So my follow up question to y'all are, is, are you telling your children about Jesus? How often do you talk to your kids about the Bible? Do you read the Bible with your kids? Do you listen to Christian music? Do you worship and praise with your kids? Do you speak in tongues to your kids? You know, do you tell them about fasting and praying? Do you tell them about scriptures and what they need to know about the evils and the, the satanic stuff and the, the demon spirits that's going to come in their path? Do you talk about that? That's my follow up. So yours could be about, if I'm going to talk to my kids about flesh, I'm going to ask you, are you talking to your kids about spiritual? Because I definitely am. Mm-hmm. So I want to ask you that follow-up. And you leave me a comment under this video and on D.Levine on Instagram. 
that's my follow up question to you. That's a good one. Yeah. And I agree with everything. You know, Jerry, we have the same core values and, you know, or else it wouldn't work. Like we are very, we communicate and we agree with each other on a lot of things. And that's something that I also, you know, stand by and agree that our kids are just angels. And I don't think, you know, I just feel like at this point in their life, I don't want, like you said, to burden in our kids with, you know, these things that go on in life that are very, that can be, you know, unfair, unfortunate, and biased, and all this racial stuff that I just don't think that is necessary for them to consume and hear about um, at this point in their life. But I know it's going to happen. I think everyone um, goes through stereotypes and, and racial differences and discrimination every every race um i'm not saying i'm sure that you know african americans and black people have it way more than other races um but at this point i just don't my kids are just they're angels like you said and you just said it perfectly like they're just when the time is right um jerry and i will get together and ultimately he will probably be the one having the conversation with them but with me by his side agreeing because i that's my i wouldn't marry him if i didn't trust that he had you know he has our kids best interest at heart um and we're very very protective and i think that just overall they're going to be deeply rooted when and i feel like regardless they're going to be so confident and so strong that can't nobody tell them that they're less than anything and neither should you yeah same thing i'm gonna tell them yeah. same thing i try to tell y'all mm-hmm. in between you know jokey and and sarcasm and all of the entertainment stuff that we produce for y'all i definitely could get deeper and i know a lot of people want oh you ain't keeping it real i could i could, trust me we talk about real things every day mm-hmm. it don't always have to be on camera because it's all about you got to deliver that thing right you got to be patient with a lot of things, mm-hmm. how you get things across to people. So I definitely appreciate your question. And I appreciate y'all having a little thread on the comments. But make sure you answer my questions. All right. There you have it. This wraps up another Q&A. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. And leave us, again, leave us feedback down below. What are your thoughts on everything we talked about? Um, we love hearing from you guys, and you know the comment section is for y'all to to comment amongst yeah. yourselves. I want to see thick paragraphs. All right, <laughs> and it shall be. All right. <laughs> love you guys. Love y'all. Who that?